okay. See, like uh, okay, now I know I, I know I, I asked like you I know I asked you this question when we was doing the Trucker Beauties interview. And I was asking you how did your husband feel about you, you know, doing the Trucker Beauty thing, right? And you know, you pretty much, uh-huh. you know, you pretty much told me about it in in the interview, but I wanted to get a little bit more like how does he like, you know, how does he feel about you, you know, doing the I, I seen you in a couple of, well, not a couple, probably a lot. My lives. Yeah, I seen you in a lot of lives, man. Like, like literally chopping it up, and I'm I'm thinking to myself, like, what does Joy feel about all this? Like, I mean, <laughs> you showing ass, like, you know, you sitting yeah. there talking about sets and. And 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 this, that, and the third, and I'm I'm kind of like thinking to myself, like, how is Joey taking all of this? So that's what I wanted to. Wanted oh, now if you want to act like I'm home, I just sitting outside. So if you want me to get him out here when you ask certain questions, I can do that too. He don't mind. Oh, okay. Let me know when you're ready. Yep, I'm ready. All right. I'm ready. All right, here we go. All right, all right, y'all. I'm just going to just jump right into this one, man. Just going to jump right into this one. You know what I'm saying? This young lady is is loud. She's a comedian. <laughs> She's a trucker. She's a motivational speaker. She got a little bit of controversy in herself, y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> She's she's a little controversial. She could she could get sassy when she needs to get sassy. She could get saucy when it needs to be saucy. You know what I'm saying? This young lady, you you guys should know her. She's on YouTube. Yes, yeah, she's a YouTuber. She's her her should I say the YouTube name? The YouTube name is yeah, the you- Rankins. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, I think she went through a number of YouTube names. You know, first it was it was the Rankins, then it was the Rankins World. I think it's the Rankins now World Rankin right World. now. It's all about yeah. it's all about the Rankins. You know what I'm saying? And if y'all and if you already know since I said the Rankins, you already know who I got on the show. I, <laughs> do I need to say her name? Do I need to say her name? Her name is I Am Clarissa Rankins. Yes, sir. Yeah, thank you, thank Welcome you, to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, sir. You know we we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna say much, but she was on the show before representing her her other brand, which we're not gonna talk about because this particular show is all about I Am Clarissa Rankins. So, Clarissa, what's what's going on, man? What's what's going on with you? Nothing much, but so much. <laughs> Nothing much, but so much. God damn it, man! You know. Uh, well, let's start at the beginning, man. Where 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 where, where you hail from? Where am I? What? Where you hail from? Where you at? Where you live? Where you from? Um, re- really? Well, I'm originally from South Carolina. I'm a country girl. But um, I currently live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and um, I've been here now for a couple years now. But I'm originally from South Carolina, country, old school country girl. All right. So what was what was life like as a as a young Clarissa coming up in a in a country country girl? Girl, <laughs> you heard what y'all you heard what she said, y'all. She said girl. She didn't say girl. She said girl. Country girl. Hey. Um, me coming up, I was always a wild child, uh, a, a firecracker, big personality. So I got in trouble a whole lot because you couldn't change me. You couldn't dull me down. You couldn't tell me to shut up. The only thing you could tell me is be you. So um, as I was coming up, I was always the, the black sheep of the family, very different from everyone else. And also I was raised in a single-parent household, so that had a lot to do with you need to calm down and focus on what you need to focus on. So, <laughs> but other than that, I had a pretty good life. And as I was coming up, I just always 
would never shelter my outspoken personality. Okay. Never. And it just growing from there. <laughs> so being so so being in a single parent household like majority of us are, you know, I you know, I came from a single parent household. Uh unfortunately my father passed when I was young. Um you know, moms, you know, just took the reins and it was just me and her there for a minute. And then, you know, my sister came into play and, you know, it, it, it took a strong woman to to for me to raise a man of my stature. You know what I'm saying? So how, how many was it? How, how many was it in your in your family? Was it just you or you got siblings? Um, I have an older brother and an older sister, and then I was the baby of three. And then on my daddy's side, I'm the middle girl. Oh, okay, okay. Of three. Okay. Yeah. So, so was your so was your parents married at one time, and they just got you know divorced, or they just separated, or? Um, my parents, my parents was married when I was younger, all the way up to the age of five, mm -hmm. and they got divorced because my daddy was um, abusive father. He was um, um, he wasn't an alcoholic or a drug user. He was just a mentally abusive, physically verbally abusive parent and father. So um, and husband. So my mama just decided to. She was like, "I'm done." And when she left, we all left. Um, and I stayed in contact with him for years as I got older. Matter of fact, I was the closest to him. But then over something recently, we just kind of parted our ways. But it that's how it was. They was married, and she just couldn't take it no more. So. She lived. <laughs> so you so so you stayed in so you said you stayed in contact with your father. Uh you you didn't let you you didn't let the issues between your mother and and father dilute the you know, dilute the relationship that you, you know, the daughter have with her father. At oh, that yeah, at I, that time. Yep, I always kept in contact with my dad. Um matter of fact, he was like my always the one that give me those key pointer parts of parenting. He parents over the phone. So um, he always was that parent that told me what I needed to know to survive, but it was over the phone wow. or virtually. But I never I never looked at him no different. That's That was my mama and his problem that didn't have a problem with me. Okay. I didn't understand. So how would I judge, you know? Right, 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 right. But now, you know, later later in life, you, you, you say that, you do you have a marginal relationship with your father or you it just well, yep all the way up until this year um i have always had a uh, talk to my daddy two times two three times a week mm -hmm. or we'll talk over the internet and then that was our relationship and it went it went perfectly fine until something tragically like um he did recently that um i, I will, will not talk about i got you um, but but it was just something that changed our whole entire world with it coming out of me and his relationship. Oh, okay. But it wasn't his. It wasn't my doing. It was more of his being an adult man. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> decision, so. Sorry to hear that. You know, I I hate to you know I hate to see that you know that y'all relationship at one point uh, was good and then it just turned you know flip upside down. You know I'm I you know like me and my moms you know we. You know, like in the middle of my growing up, we kind of like, we kind of like had a separation. But I, I learned through the years because, you know, I've seen my other friends lose their parents. And, you know, and I'm just looking and still thankful to have mine. You know, I'm still thankful yep. to have, you know, to have her with me, her wisdom, her, her, idiotism you know what i'm saying and yeah. i i i went and told myself that look you know i only got i only got the one parent regardless of of how i feel and how she feel we need to come back to come back together same thing with my sister you know we you know we were separated at you know we had separation for a little bit but you know i was like look you know for our mother we need to come back together because I don't want her to, I don't want her to go to her internal sleep thinking that me and, I mean, me and my sister couldn't, you know, couldn't get along with each other. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yeah, so I totally agree. Yep, I totally I wanted, agree. I wanted that. I wanted that. All right, all right. So, Clarissa, man, uh, it's 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 so much to talk about you. You know what I'm saying? It's 
it's so much to talk about you and i i really can't put like like where to like where to really start um i mean wow i mean so 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 much about you that you know in so little time <laughs> uh let's talk let's talk about trucking uh when uh well, let's talk about before trucking. What what were you doing before trucking? Um, before trucking, uh, before I even met my husband, I was just a single parent. I was with my high school sweetheart, and then we split up. But then um, I just decided I I had to find a job to take care of my my son. And then um, once I, started, I was finding a job that wasn't going nowhere, so I got it in CNA, and I figured out that wasn't enough money. And then eventually that's when I met my husband at that facility, that location when I was a nurse and or whatever, doing CNA work. And um, I wasn't, still wasn't making no money. And I had my husband and he was making good money because he decided to go to school for his CDL. Mm-hmm. So I decided to go to college. And I was like, oh, well, since I'm not making money, let me go get my bachelor's degree and see if that can put some more money in, in my pocket for the family with a four-year degree. That didn't make no money. So, um, what you go? What you go to college for? Working. What 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 was the degree for? Um, I went to school for criminal justice, so I ended up going to school for four years and working into the justice system. Um, I worked as a correctional officer. I did a lot of. Um, I decided to go to the high school and do five years of sub substitute teaching, bus driving, and then last couple last year I did a teaching, and I was teaching a principal family human service class following still following my degree and it still wasn't no money so every everything i was doing it wasn't enough income to take care of my household help my husband with a with, with majority of the medical bills for our son and so much more so i just decided to i said i'm done i i was i was just done of working every day every day every day every day and still not making the money that i need to see to take care of what i want to take care of and do things that i want to do mm-hmm. so i got out of that and got into trucking okay okay now you said uh you, you said medical uh medical problems with with your son if i may ask what's what what, what was the problems that y'all was what was the challenges that y'all oh, was facing um, with them so I have two boys, one of them is 14, one of them is nine, but my youngest son was born with um, a heart defect called hyperplastic left heart syndrome. That, wait, wait, so wait. Read that by me again? Uh, <laughs> hyperplastic Hi- left heart left heart syndrome. syndrome. For the people and myself and that don't know what that is, <laughs> can you uh, explain what that is? Um, that means that he was born with half a heart. So that means the left side of his heart never developed. Oh, um, so he came into the world with having surgeries on top of surgeries. Altogether, he have had um, four open heart surgeries. Oh so God. we we had to find something. I was a stay at home mom when I went to school because I was going to school and taking care of him because he was full blown special needs, like full blown. You got to be attentive. So it wasn't just enough money. It wasn't enough money for our medical bills because we wasn't getting insurance from the government. Right. We wasn't getting um, help because my, my husband, Joey, made too much. And then they said we made too much. We were married. It was just so much going on. So it just wasn't enough money to take care of our our household for everything you, even dental, you, all that. You stuff. mean to like tell me? You mean to tell me the government didn't didn't step in to to at least offer? uh medical for the young man considering his his condition um, we only had three years of assistance and that was it like after that we did we, that was still at a minimum because we made they said we made too much and then we was married so no we don't have like even like now dr bill's out the behind we don't have no help from the government oh my None god at all. No social security it, it, check, not all our medical bills all that we got to pay out of pocket Oh my god! You know, and it's it's I mean, funny. Got insurance on them, and it's yeah. it's funny, you know, not not to. It's funny that the 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 owner operators, uh, is going to is going to D.C. for help, going to ask the government for help, you know, with this current driver broker thing, and and the government couldn't even couldn't even help you out with your with 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 the chat with your challenge kid. But yet we we want to go yeah. and ask the government. I mean that's 
I mean, that's sort of what happened to me. I mean, you know, I, I wasn't in that strenuous position, but money was kind of was kind of rough for us at one point, which made me go downtown and to see if I could get assistance. They told me, you know, your wife makes too much money, bro. I'm not here about my You're wife. Crazy. I'm I'm here about me, you know. I'm not making yep. enough money. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm, you know, and you know, I ain't too proud to ask for food stamps, but God damn it, man. You know, I mean, my wife was doing, yep. my wife was doing what she could at the time to, uh, you know, to make the family work. It was me that I needed to, you know, I was in the situation. I was hurt. I couldn't work for a little bit. So, yeah, I wouldn't ask the government too, but. Yeah, yeah that that part right there. Yeah. But it, but how? <laughs> it makes it's horrible. How how is he now though? How how is he now? Um, he's perfectly fine. Um, okay. he's doing phenomenal. He just had uh he had monitor heart monitor and blood pressure monitors on the other day mm-hmm. for a week, and uh he he uses imagination and said that that was his uh the blood pressure cuff. He said that was his bomb that he can spray out and he said the heart monitor was his uh button that he can spray out his suit he it, it can produce his superman like his super suit for okay. like a magical power so he is so he's doing great he just got a big personality just like his mama but quiet like his daddy <laughs> okay that's what's up man yeah, i'm 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 great. i am so happy to hear that man i am i am definitely so happy to hear that i'm happy to hear that uh that god got him you know what i'm saying Make sure that he, you know, make sure that he all right. He got, and he got both parents. That's 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 working out for him, man. So, uh, so where you you mentioned you mentioned your husband? You know, he he got into trucking. Um, you pretty much was influenced from him to get into trucking yourself. Oh yeah. Um. Because that's one thing we are big about supporting each other. Like we, it's just all we got is a, us four as a family. So um, he he always wanted to get in trucking because he he know it was good money in it. So once he got into it, and I seen it, and I was like, dang, I gotta get a piece of that. So <laughs> so um, but yeah, he was mainly my my kind of motivator to help me get into it. Because at first he was kind of like, ah, no, nah, I don't think this is gonna be a good idea. <laughs> and then uh, once I got into it and. I did my first year. We got our own authority, and we went from there. Like so, it was, he was like my my mo- little motivation to kind of try it, give it okay. a try. And I've been comfortable ever since. Okay. So, where where did you where where did you go to start? I mean, did you did you go to a company to get your license, or you went to a school to get your license? Oh no, I went to a school down here in uh, Concord, North Carolina, right by my house, and um, it was through a community college and uh, people don't know this but a lot of community colleges a lot of unemployment offices will pay for you or give you a scholarship to help put you through school for your cdl because there's such a high demand for it and um i did that for two months i did that monday through friday from eight to five for two months Mm -hmm. and um it was right down here by my house and then i quit working at the school system um and i started waiting tables at night so i was going to school in the morning and replacing my money that i wasn't teaching with no more and waiting tables at night and then when my two months was up it was over like i found a job within a month later i found a job and i've been trucking ever since and it's been phenomenal how was your and um, how was your first experience with your first trucking company um my first trucking company was uh for a warehouse and i was doing like moving a trailer with a little day cab from about 13 miles and going from warehouse to warehouse. And it was it was okay because it wasn't a trucking company. And um, I did that for a year. Mm-hmm. And as soon as my year was up, I went and got my own authority. And okay. I did that for a little bit, and that didn't work good. So now I'm with, I'm with a company that I, I love. They they, they don't bother me. I don't bother oh, them. And hold up now. Up. Hold up now. You, you went and got your own authority. You uh, Within a year. Within, within a year. What uh? What inspired you to get your own authority, and what route that you took to get it? Um, what, what mainly inspired me to get my own authority is, I always said I'm gonna have my own transportation company because my on my daddy's side we have a transportation company 
um, for I think it's over over 101 years now. So I have always had transportation in my blood, but that company been running since it's five or six generations now. I think somewhere around it, I think it's like six generations now. So I said I'm gonna do something for my boys. Like so I'm gonna get my year of experience in, and after that. I'm gonna have something for my boys to, to live with. I mean, okay. running my family is gener uh, like it's two generations, and I was end up being the first family member to have my own trucking company driving an 18 wheeler, oh. even being a female driving an 18 wheeler. So it's just something that I thought was okay. Let's try. It. And Joey is one of the type of people. That either he's all in or he's all out. So he was all in, and we. Made a decision. We was like, we're gonna go for it. So, so this, and, so um, this is your, so this is your own authority. So, do you, do you own, do you own your truck? Do you and Joy own own each other's trucks, or do y'all, do y'all, are y'all leasing your trucks, or what's how, how how? Now, now, oh, go ahead. No, I, no, I'll let, I'll let you talk because I was wondering. I, I was saying both. Do y'all have your own individual trucks, or do y'all do y'all share truck, or how how that's working for for so, your own authority right now? So, so right now we're not under our, we, we got our authority on hold and we're running under a company and doing like the lease in one truck, but the other truck we got from a dealership and that was ours, and um and that's and it's going pretty good. It's I haven't had no problems yet. I'm still with the same company that I'm leased under, and I like being leased under that company because I'm guaranteed freight. When I had my own authority and running under my own authority. I wasn't waiting at every location, going, dealing with the broker, having to do a lot of conversation, right, and right. I'm not that type of person. I want to work and go. So um, both the trucks now leased under a company that I love, um, and they can check out my YouTube page at, at the Rankings World about what company that is. Right. And so one truck is owned by us and one truck is leased, and I would never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I would not so do now, I don't mind doing a lease, but I would never keep buying trucks again. I, I think we're going to do a different kind of transportation. I got you. I yeah, got you. So, good. so both of y'all, both of y'all have, uh, both of y'all have your own trucks. Uh, your your husband has no, his. No, no, no. He worked. He worked for somewhere. He worked for um a different company. Like he worked locally. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. But he still drive a truck. He okay. just don't drive his own. Yeah, but he's local. Oh. Yep, he's local every day. He home with his boys every night. And the father was boys every night, and sometimes I'm I'm out like two days a week, and I'm home the rest of the time. So yeah. Okay. So yeah. It, so I thought you did that. I'm sorry. So that <laughs> works. So that works for you. Okay. That that pretty much works for you, man. All right. So how long? And, and you know why it works? Why why do it work? Oh, why why do it work? Um, it works because I'm raising two black men, and I want my men to be raised by a man. A woman, I could be a mommy all day. I can nurture my kids all day. Mm -hmm. I can baby my kids all day. Mm -hmm. But I can't teach them how to be a man. Exactly. That got to come from my father. Exactly. So he cooks. He cleans. He he take care. He get them to doctor's appointments. If I can't be there, he does everything I can do. So why not let him be the man and show my show my young black boys this is a man. Like this is how I be a man. I was raised by a man and a woman. Period. All right. Okay. That's what's <laughs> so up. That's how we look at it. That's what's up, man. All right, so where, so where, uh, where, where did it, where did it hit you? Where did it inspire you to become a, uh, what you, what's on here? Uh, your comedian, motivational speaker. Where, where did, uh, where did all that come from? Um, I'm a naturally funny person. I love to goof. Like I'm, I'm a goof troop. I'm a roaster. I got a real quick mouth. Like, I can come back with something real quick. I can feed it to you. Um, i always been a funny person. Like, I'm a fun I'm like one of those type of people, you don't even have to sit in front of me, but you'll feel like I'm your best friend. Okay. We can talk like I'm your homegirl that you've been knowing all your life. So i always been one of them type of people. And that's where that came from. Like, I love to make people laugh. I love to stay positive and keep people uplifted. When it comes down to motivation, that's where my money at. Like, it's I can I can sell anything. I can push somebody. I can promote people. I can encourage. And I just took it into a platform of I got to do this for people. Like, people don't have that, especially in the black community. We don't have people that's motivating each other to do better, sharing our wealth, sharing knowledge. If if I know something, then you know it. And 
that's what keeps me going is being a, I'm an entertainer. I'm a natural born entertainer, period. I can't erase it. I can't try to fix it, tweak it. I'm a natural born entertainer. Okay. And that's what leads to why my husband allowed me to do a lot of things because I am an entertainer. I got you. I got you. All right. So when did you, when, when did you start it? Uh, when did you start the YouTube page? Um, I started the YouTube page as soon as I started trucking. Um, that was back in, I want to say, 2017. So I started about three years ago. And um, just being my comedy self, just making videos. And then I really got more into it. I, I kind of learned, like, oh, I can make money from this. Oh, well, let me try this. Or <laughs> And it just went from there. It's about three years ago. That's when I really started, and I wanted it to be more, stop letting it be so much about me and include my family. So that's why I changed the name from Clarissa Rankin to um, the Rankin's World. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Hold on for a second. Give me a hot second. Hold on. All right. There you go. Uh, my son just texted me. Um, all right, all right. So you change, so you change it from that to what it is now, which it is some very good, uh, very good content on uh, on on your channel. And yeah, you you very much, uh, very much outspoken. <laughs> very much outspoken. I have a whole clothing line for it. Yeah, so. <laughs> you very much outspoken. Uh, the yeah. the the YouTube page uh, pretty much got you. Pretty much got you famous. Uh, it got you a little bit more famous after you uh, hooked up with uh, with with another YouTuber, um, Trucker Brown. Um, you 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 guys hooked up, uh, got together, and uh, you know th things happens. Uh, y'all made y'all made some things happens. Um, I think y'all got together and y'all did the y'all was part of the Wild Network or that was a network. That no, that was, was his. Network. Oh, that was his. Okay, that yeah, was supposed that was to his. that was supposed that to come together. Uh, what was the uh, what was the experience uh, like with uh, with Trucker Brown and how did y'all meet him? I mean, how how did y'all come to meet him? Uh, well, the experience. Well, first, the reason how I met him is. Um, he told my husband, he was like, I don't, I don't, I don't forgot how we met, but he told my husband, he was like, I want to do an interview with your, um, uh, with your wife. He was like, well, let me ask her. And he asked me, I was like, oh yeah, sure. That's what's up. It don't matter to me. Okay. So, um, we first did the first interview. It was good. It was, it was good. And, um, the experience with him was, he's very smart, but he was just, um, he is a whole different breed <laughs> <laughs> from what I'm used to. <laughs> it was not, um. He's a very smart guy. He knew it. He he know his stuff, but he's a uh, he was a narcissist, like kind of a too like it gotta be his way or no way. And I wasn't, and that wasn't gonna turn out good. I'm not a follower. I'm I'm a I'm a leader, and we're a team. I don't do the I don't do the whole I will follow somebody's lead. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> that's not what I do. So that really didn't work out too well. And <laughs> at all. okay, okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, do y'all do y'all still conversate? Do y'all do y'all still talk? No, I would never talk to him ever again. Uh, <laughs> no, I would never talk to him again. Okay. Um, and I would never even want to be in the same room as him okay. again because I look at it like this: once you disrespect my my marriage, it's 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 time to cut you off like it's no i have no respect for you i wouldn't be a i wouldn't be a lady if i wasn't see him again because i feel like my marriage is he did some he did some crazy things and i feel like when it comes down to my marriage with us already being a black family it's already difficult it's already difficult you got everybody don't want to see y'all married you got everybody don't want to see y'all together you got everybody against you because you're doing something that is very uncommon that's being a black married together couple in one household so um i look at it like you try that it's over for you that's cutthroat for me do you <laughs> so, do you no never again do you feel the do, do you feel that um that you know because some of it 
unfortunately was played out on YouTube. Um, and I think a little bit on Instagram as well. But um, do you do you think was some of the people that that were saying that you didn't become you didn't become popular or you wouldn't be popular right now if it wasn't because of him? Um, well, when it comes down to that, I didn't know who I never did know who he was until like uh, my husband used to always watch him. But I believe I came who I am because of who I am. Like I didn't come for you. I didn't come for him. He came for me. Like he he came. He wanted to do an interview with me. I don't need nobody. Right. Okay. <laughs> like I don't need to have no. I don't need to have. I don't need to be on nobody's page. I'm one of them type of people. I like to just be me. So if somebody asked me to be a part of something, then then it is what it is. But even if I would have, even if I would have never met him or anybody else, if my career take off, it take off. But I don't like to meet people and be on their platform anyway for little things like that. Like, oh, you wasn't nothing before you met him. Right. So you just didn't know who I was. I'm always been Clarissa Rankin. Oh, okay. I'm always been a go getter. I've always been a hustler. I always been who I am, outspoken, phenomenal, a motivator. I always been that. So you just didn't know who I was until he put me on his platform. You didn't know who I was, but other people know me. So I had to give you I a mean, bomb really for that. <laughs> <laughs> you say no <laughs> you say I was I mean, already Clarissa Rankin. I yeah. I was, I was already, already Carissa Rankin. It. God damn it, man. Yeah, cut it out. <laughs> it was just, he put me into a different, he put me in front of his platform. That was it. But I'm always been me. Okay. Nobody can't make me. I got you. I got you. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, you, you, uh, you, you had, uh, how can, how can I say this? You you had contact with, uh, with another uh, a YouTuber as well. I think y'all was both in the same. Well, I, I well at the same. I, I want to say Trucker Brown click, but uh, but uh, Jay Rich, you you was uh, you was cool. You know, you was cool with Jay Rich. I seen a couple of videos where you and her together as well. Uh, as a matter of fact, I seen. As a matter of fact, uh, before her channel got hijacked, uh, y'all did y'all y'all did a video with uh, y'all did a video together. I forgot what that video was, but uh, but y'all did a video together. Yeah, we did a we did a lot of videos together. Yeah, um, what's yeah. the relationship like between you and her now? Um, same same thing, uh, same thing as the other one. Never again. Like I said, if you try to if you try to ruin my marriage or you tell lies or do something to harm my marriage, it's cutthroat. Like I have no respect, and that's when you get like the other side of me. Like that's when you get. You don't get Carissa Rank. You get straight trouble. Like it's over. It's not gonna be a pleasant. It's not gonna be a pleasant movement. That's when you get the comedian side, like the roaster and the and the <laughs> the one that that uh, step into your room. Like, okay, what's up? Okay. <laughs> so, same thing. Um, you you cannot disrespect. That's one thing I got I gotta say. When it comes down to a marriage, you cannot step into someone's marriage and 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 put your opinion out there. A marriage is sacred, and I look at me and Joy, the way we work so much, and we work so good together. We we have been together, like I told you before, 14 years. So you that's something, so, we got a bond that he's my best friend, he's my motivator, he's my uplifter, he's my, like, he's my every movement, he's my breath I breathe. If you try to break that, that turns a person into a person, into a villain. Like, that turns into a, a, a vicious killer because it's so we so strong together and she tried her and her partner in crime tried to do that and i and i don't agree with that okay and it just it'll never be it'll never be nothing ever again never never so you you can't so you and joey was together for 14 and he's here and he's here by the way (laughs) so you and joey uh been together for 14 years y'all y'all build y'all y'all built the marriage uh trump type uh 14 years let me give you an applause for that because, you know, we try to, you know, we try to, you know, try to build the black marriages, but you know, it always end in divorce. But it sounds as though that y'all two, y'all two been trunk tight for 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 years. So I have a, I guess uh, I guess I have a question for uh, for for Joy right quick. Um, Okay. And so you may let him talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
So some of the recent videos, uh, some of the re- some of the recent videos that's coming out right now uh, uh, by Clarissa. I am Clarissa Rankin. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, she's uh, she's part of the uh, trucker beauties movement right now. And, you know, that unfor- you know, that came up under some scrutiny uh, a little while back. But uh, some of the some of the videos that uh, that uh, Clarissa is participating in. Woo. I, I, I got to say, I got to say, I what's what's your what's what's your take on 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 that bruh I, I i need to hear it from you i don't need to hear it from nobody else i I need to hear it from you <laughs> um my take on it man it to be honest with you it don't it don't bother me because it's there's nothing that's that's anything that's out there is already on her own instagram that i i take photos or videos mm-hmm. So it ain't nothing different. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, if you see anything else somewhere else, it's already on her Instagram. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Uh, she got, she's a little bit of X-rated on there. Uh, you know, I, I was just kind of wondering, like, for, <laughs> I was just kind of wondering for, so, like, you know, okay. for, like, some of the guys, some of the people that might come to you and be like, damn, bruh, like, her husband really letting her do that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> So let me ask you go, this, go. Then. What, what's considered to be X rated? X rated is naked to me. Oh well, shit. Uh, X rated could be X rated could be lingerie. X rated speak. Uh, yeah, you know that's. See, I don't consider that to be X rated. Oh, okay, okay. R. <laughs> how about R rated? The reason why? Because this is my. Go favorite. ahead. I, the reason why I feel it's not X rated is because you can look at a catalog magazine for. But JC Penney's didn't see some lingerie. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got you. So I I feel like people kinda take it too far to what it is and, and it's not it's really not that. Like I said, if it's if it's our if it's out there, it's on her Instagram. I love this is this is what people don't know about mm-hmm. me. I this photography stuff is new to me, but I have, you know what I'm saying, fell to to love it. And now I'm finding my niche. I love taking photos of of people. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's, it's, I look at women as art. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I love, especially a beautiful black woman taking photos where they in lingerie or just clothes. Just, I just love it. Like, that's, I'm finding my niche and what I like, and that's what I've grown to love is that. Oh, okay. You do all my pictures. And I do all her pictures, and I'm studying, trying, I'm studying photography, teaching myself. Along with the help of a few people that I met, you know, saying a while ago that we don't longer talk to, but other than that, that's what I like to do. And I, I kind of scratch the surface on videography a little bit. Some of the videos that's on our YouTube, you know, what I'm saying so she did, and uh, the ones that's heavily edited, I did. So that's just what I do. I don't see anything wrong with what's going on. It's just at the end of the day, people watch entertainment whether it's on the professional level or whether it's on the lower end level. Okay. So you got married couples that's on the professional level are getting millions and their wife might be in the sex thing. Yeah, so yeah, I know. Good. Yeah, I, it's a, uh, I, I forgot this, I forgot this one couple, they got like a OnlyFans and they got like, they, they make millions of dollars off of that shit. And I'm like, I'm looking at that shit like, Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, so, and you know what's crazy? I'm not even that deep into that. I would never. You never you won't go. It. You it's won't go that far. No, hey, hey, no, I'm not. No, we would never. I mean, well, hey, Joy, yeah, Joy, probably, hold up, man, hold up now. If if the money was there, and I still wouldn't do it. But what if? All right, so Clarissa, Ain't Clarissa, no. what? If the money was there and you wanted to do it, would you would would you encourage Joy to do it? No, no, because I, I feel like uh, every like like I said before, everything I do currently, he he does like he does my pictures, he does all that. So like she wouldn't feel comfortable, comfortable. with somebody else. Even- Taking her yeah, yeah, that makes plenty of sense, <laughs> right? Especially if you, especially if you, you know, find, like you said, you finding your niche into it. So yeah, yeah, I would rather have have my, 
have my husband take you know take take pictures of the of, of the wife. Practice. You know, it's giving me practice. Yep. And I just like even like when it comes down to a lot of our pictures that he takes, he positions my clothes certain ways. Like he pulls, you can see the print of my vagina. He does all of that. I'd be like, oh no, no. But he'd be like, no, this is perfect. This is gonna sell, and it'd be hitting at every time. Like he does. Um, like even with my lighting, what to wear, he positions my clothes. Like even when I do my live videos, he fixes my shirts and my draw, everything. God damn it. <laughs> that, that Joey, then why not? Okay, listen. All right, listen. Joey, <laughs> man, why I'm not good. go and do the OnlyFans thing, bruh? That's where the money at. <laughs> I don't because. To be honest with you, I, I feel like it's not, it doesn't go no farther than that. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not taking naked photos. I don't know. You get what I'm right. saying? Right. You don't, no, 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 like, no. I'm you don't even, have to take, man, listen, no. You you don't have to take naked photo. Uh, naked photos of uh, Clarissa. I'm, I'm sure there's some thirsty ass niggas out there that really wants to see, you know, see her that far. But, you know, I'm sure oh, for yeah. Clarissa, yeah. it's a respect thing for you, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a respect yeah. thing for you. You know, I mean. And for me. Oh, and, and for, for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and for you. Okay. But I'm just saying, like, as far as as far as OnlyFans go, you can you can make a page just for, you know, lingerie and all that other shit. Because, you know, with Clarissa's popularity right now, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what you right. I mean, I haven't thought about it. You you make a lot of sense. To be honest, I I guess I'm just being like other people when people hear only fans. Mm-hmm. Y'all not about to pimp me out. I, <laughs> hey, I'm, 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 people, I'm, well, look, Carissa, I you. I mean, look, nobody. Ain't, okay, look, 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 look. look. I, 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 I'm not. I, no, we're not trying to. You know, we're not trying to butt heads and trying to figure out how we can, how we can, uh, how we can get you out there. You already out there, Clarissa. I'm just saying you. Yeah, I'm just you know, you that. already I'm out there with your with your Instagram and all like that, and your Instagram live. Like you know how you be sitting there talking I'm, about the talking about the things you be talking about. And Joey, question yeah. question oh, on yeah, that part. It. Like how she be getting yeah. down with the speak, bruh. I mean, she, I mean, you. She, get down with she, the she be getting down with the speak, like you know what she would do to you in bed, and this, that, and the third, bruh. I mean, how do you feel? How, oh, yeah, how, how do you do? You really want people to know that she gets down with you? Like, yo, this is my shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it don't bother me. We all grown, and I feel like this, and this is from the bottom of my mm-hmm. heart. You know what's crazy? I have now. This is me. Like every guy has their thing, you know what? What you know? What I'm saying gets them going and what turns them mm-hmm. on. Like when she goes in that mode, I'm 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 sitting right there beside her. You know what I'm right. saying? Like I'm right there. So it's like at the end of the day, when she's doing that, she's talking to me. <laughs> okay. So it's like so. So it's like when that line go off, it's actually it's time to go to war. You know what okay. I'm saying? People didn't know that. Okay. So it's That's like I, I got you. I got you. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm so, so after it's after after it's so all it's like, said and done, I'm ready to go. At least <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's like so I got you, bro. It's like a, some people some people will look at what we doing. Of course they're gonna look at it as a negative mm-hmm. way. But at the end of the day, we have respect for our marriage and we have boundaries and limits. This is our marriage. And we do what works for us. Now we not selling nothing or offering anything nobody else. But I know for me, it's certain things that that we do. It just spices up our y'all love our life, our adult life. Right, it just does. I can't explain the why uh, to anybody else, but to us, it just it just does. It's, it's entertainment as well. As she's on there entertaining people on the live. You know what I'm saying? Just for for shits and giggles. You you know that you know that's yours right there. You don't have you don't have nothing to worry about. You exactly, Joy. Exactly, Joy. That's that's what's up. You don't have to, you know. She can come on and 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 talk all that good speak and show all that good skin all she wants. But at the end of the day, that's yours at night. So that's that's what's up. Man. You know what's crazy? Like and like and we are, bro. We understand that. I understand most definitely that. 
other people or people would look at it like that's 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 disrespect like right. what is she doing right but like i said it also goes back to people who are in imax and and who are married people who do actual movies and make millions of dollars not sex movies but just movies in general are where they have sex scenes with other actors, mm-hmm. actors and they get paid for it of course a million dollars and they not looked at it like wow what's wrong with them why would they do it she's married they look at as oh they just entertain so which what is it any difference of what she's doing i got you just because she's not famous or making millions off of it it's just looked at as uh Oh, she, oh, she's married. She's doing too much. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. So you know, just so what it, it ain't, it ain't joy, really ain't no joy man. What, what do you, what, what do you have? What do you have to say for the naysayers out there, man? That be, that that be, you know, that be talking that negative stuff to her, man. Only thing I gotta say for the naysayers that talk the negative towards. I don't get a lot of negative towards. But well, now towards you don't. Anything <laughs> that we got going on. Mm-hmm. I really don't care. To a certain degree, I don't care because nobody pays our bills. Mm -hmm. Nobody in our household are directed towards what we should be doing. And it doesn't bother me because we are genuinely happy people. All right. We're not in nobody else's business worried about what's going on with them. So why should people be worried about what's going on with them? There you go, man. We're not paying their bills. Why are you worried about us? If anybody is, you know what I'm saying? People probably, I'm pretty sure people are talking. And then you got people who are with us that love what we're doing. And you got people who are against us and, and not agree with what we're doing. Yeah. It don't matter what we do in life, whether it's good or bad, somebody's going to always have something to say about what exactly. you do. Exactly. Whether they agree with it or not agree with it. It don't matter. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We can be giving out a million dollars a year to homeless people, and somebody still has something, something bad, bad to say. say. Or they're just doing it yep. just to, just to, uh, just so people can talk about them. You know what I'm saying? Rankings. That's so, what's up, man. Matter. That's that, that's me, that man. that's that bond. I hear I I hear that bond coming from you, man. That's 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 that bond for you and your wife, man. 14 years. I hope you I hope you guys continue, man. I hope you guys continue that strong bond with each other. Clarissa. Mm, Clarissa. Yes, sir. You got a good one there. <laughs> Better hold on to that boy. <laughs> you better hold- You know what you know what I'm saying? And- and hopefully one day I get to, I'll be taking photos for, for other people, whether it's a, a couple who want to take photos in lingerie, whether it's a man, it's people, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I might get to that level. I don't like, that's something, not, that's why I say she gives me a lot of practice. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? A lot of work. Do you think I give you a lot of work because of my personality too? <laughs> you say personality. Yeah. You got, you got a lot of it, uh, Clarissa. You got a lot of it. Hey, uh, Clarissa. <laughs> what? Then, oh, go ahead, Joy. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and what's crazy, all this was really important in this nutshell of what we're doing is to show people to enjoy your marriage. But nobody's going to see that message because they're too busy trying to pick apart of what they think is wrong. There you go. But the message of what we're doing is enjoy your marriage and have fun. Don't worry about what people got to say. They're going to always have something to say regardless. Have fun. Be spontaneous. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Do something different outside of your norm. Don't always have to be the original marriage of what it was back in the day of the wife just in the house every day cooking and cleaning and and have to wear a certain type of outfit or just have to present, present herself a certain way in order for the world to respect her as a wife. So just just enjoy your marriage and be and be happy. That's 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 our message at the end of the day. If nobody can't see that, it's because they're not trying to see it. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That is what's up, man. Thank you, thank you, Daddy. That's what's up. That's a bond drop for that boy, Joy Rankins. Yes, sir, man. Thank you, Daddy. That's what's up. So uh, how how did you come to to meet him, uh, Clarissa? How how did y'all come to meet? Uh, Well, I met, I was working at a nursing home. Thank you, Daddy. I was working at the nursing home. Uh, when I had my CNA, and uh, he started working there too, and he was trying to holler. At, well, he well he was like, "I know you from somewhere." I said, "You don't know me." And he was like, "Well, basically, he wanted to get to know me." And I was like, "No, you're too young." And then uh, a couple weeks went by. He asked me for my. Um, he he told me that he was going through a breakup and he wanted to talk to a female or talk to somebody. And I said, "Well." 
give me give me your number and I'll call you. You can talk to me. Like, uh, I understand what a breakup feel like, and I'll be there for you. You know, like, I'll be listening to you. I'm, I'm one of those type girls. I'm beautiful, but I'm your home girl. Like, I'm one of those type girls that I can talk to any guy, and they can attract to me, and they can tell me. And that's another thing I was going to say. Even with doing the sexual lingerie and stuff, it opens up. I want them type of people that I can open up a man and have them talk to me and come to me and feel like, you my homegirl, you're beautiful, but I know I can't do nothing with you. I'm that type of female. Oh, okay. So that's why I was to him. And that night I called him at 11.57 at night, and I didn't get off the phone with him until 7.15 that next morning, and we never stopped talking from that oh, day. Okay. We just, it, he was like my soulmate. He was like... We were madly in love at first sight. Like, it was just crazy. Okay. And we've been together That's ever since. That's what's up. That's <laughs> what's up, man. Uh, Clarissa, I I think uh, let's talk about that TV show. Uh, did you guys ever go through with it? Because I've seen you put a, put a, put a thing on that you guys was going to be on the Mel Robinson show. How did that go? Um, like I said, I am a motivational speaker. So she ended up her producer ended up finding me to do another TV show previously before Mel Robbins. The other TV show that they wanted me to be a part of was a reality show, and it was going to be called Trucker's Love. And they was they wanted to get the casting together and put it in front of uh, w, I mean, DH1. Mm-hmm. And we still haven't heard anything back from that, but you never know what that could be. But then the same producer was like, hey, we haven't heard nothing back from the Trucker's Love, but I got something else I want you to be a part of because I think you're a beautiful person. Like, I love your personality. You're such a wonderful mother, but your personality is very outspoken. So the producer was like, I want you to be a part of this show called Mel Robbins and let Mel Robbins hear how you discipline your kids and how you're so aggressive with men, but see if it's an inter problem with the way you communicate because you're such a good mother, but you still are very aggressive. So, um, she asked me to come on to the show, and she was able to find that problem, find why I, why am I so aggressive and why I, why I am such a powerful person when it comes down to discipline. discipline. So why and why are you why why people. are you a powerful person and why? Um, the reason why I am so powerful and so strong is because I want to stop the cycle. I don't want my kids to be raised like I was raised. I don't want them to be. Um, I want them to be well-mannered, understanding that you only got one life, so you have to take care of yourself. You have to be very firm of being your own best friend and being there for each other. So when I tell my sons to clean up, that means clean up right then. It's not a lag. You do what you need to do and take care of what you need to take care of. Be a man on sight, Mm -hmm. not a man behind the closed doors. No, you always care of yourself as a man. So the reason why I'm like that is because I didn't have that when I was coming up. My mom was there for us, but I was always the, like I said, the problem child, the one that didn't get the same attention as the other ones because I was so hyper. I was, but my personality was big. So she she told me the reason why you're like that is because that's how you was raised. So you was raised in an aggressive tone of your mom telling you to calm down. So you took your aggression and you applying it in, yeah, I'm teaching my kids, but you're a little bit aggressive with your kids, like as in, like, no, you got to get it done. You got to do it because you don't want them to be like you. Okay. And I was like, wow, I never noticed that. Okay. That's what's up. <laughs> so it was just weird the way she broke it down, but it ended up being one of the best TV shows I've ever been on and the best, one of the best experience I was able to get from – outside my race about how to discipline my kids so it ended up being phenomenal okay okay where uh is it is is it is it out now is it is it yeah it's been out since it's been out since october and i think where, i think you can go on her yeah where where um, where can we find it at the, that's on the mel robin show on youtube okay and I, I want to say it's episode 22. I can't remember. Okay. But if you type in Carissa Rankin on Mel Robbins it, uh, or ABC Method on Mel Robbins, it'll, oh, pop, okay, up. it'll pop up. But it, it ended up being a great experience because, you know, in the black community, we know the – I don't whoop my kids at mm-hmm. all. So 
we are known to discipline our kids by yelling and cussing right, and, and right. sit down and all that. But she was able to teach me another way. Yeah, I can be aggressive, but I can be aggressive in a different oh, okay. way. So it was end up being phenomenal, man. It was it was it was an eye opener. And I I was on her show again. Yeah, it, it, it really was. was. And yeah, it really was. And with us being a married couple and already beating the odds of being a black married couple and a one and kids and a two parent household, it was just phenomenal, man. It really was. It really was. All right. We had a great time. All right. So Sorry. how how has um so you know we're in this big pandemic that's going on right now and now we got we we got uh, a more of a serious epidemic going on with uh with covid police brutality um uh you do you think it's a war against the black man now uh i'm i'm not talking about covid but with with the police brutality that's going on right now, you you think it's you think it's a war against the black man? Um, it uh, it always been a war against black against the black man, and that's and I I really don't feel like it's ever going to change. And the reason why I say that is because I'm raising two young black men, and I can see how intimidating my two young powerful men can be to a to another white child to to outside his race. So I, feel, I really feel like it's not going to change. I just really feel like it's, we're done. We're fed up now. And the only thing, like I told this in this other podcast I did a couple of weeks, I mean, a couple of days ago, the only thing I can do is raise my kids, my two. I can't, I can't, I don't know what this officer going to be doing. I don't know what this person going to be thinking. I don't know what's going on out there. The only thing I can do is discipline my two to be great young black men, to be great young entrepreneurs and businessmen. So when they go out to the community, I know two of them, two of them black men are going to be well. I know two of them is going to be having the script to make it home. At least having the mindset like, let me do what I got to do to make it home. Let me not make no certain moves to make it home. Because right now they're killing all of us. They don't care if you're a man, woman, they don't care. So that's the lesson that I try to give to my family is we all got to make it home. Because of this, they don't care about our lives, so we got to care about it. And I made a video about that the other day on TikTok at Carissa Rankin, and it was telling, it was showing my youngest son starting off with his heart defect, and it was showing that black lives matter, and this is why. And it ended up showing my two sons together saying, my brother already can't breathe. So I'm my brother's keeper. So our black lives okay. matter. Okay, that's what's up. And it, and it showed my boys together. Like, oh, thank you. That's what's up with that one, man. Thank you. That is what's thank up. You. And, it, and, it, and it really was a powerful thing. It really was powerful because my bro, my son is going to look after his younger brother. My younger brother going to look out for his, for his older brother because they lives matter. My, my younger son already got trouble breathing. So they got to they gotta stay alive. We, we got to support. We got to do what we supposed to do. We can't let these people kill us down. We, we got to. Are you? We got to get a better living. Are you, like, are you like me? And I, I wanted to ask. I, I probably should have asked Joy the same question. But uh, are, are you like are, <laughs> you, are, you, are you like me? Uh, because, you know, I got a young black man. Uh, my son, he's, he'll be 24 this year. Uh, as a matter of fact, he'll be 24 in, a, in about a week or so. And uh, and I'm afraid. I'm going to be totally honest with you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I, you know, I'm I'll, I'll be 51 this year. You know, I, I've seen it all. You know, I've seen I've seen the Rodney King riots. I've seen the Rodney King beating. I've seen I've seen oh, wow. white people getting beat up by white people. Black people getting beat up by black people. Uh, cops beating up black people cops beating up white people you know more so cops beating up more blacks than whites you know what i'm saying everybody's everybody's saying that it's a you know it's a difference it's it's a difference between how how white cops interact with black you know with uh with the black people and how black cops interact with the white people but shit black cops I've I seen black cops beat up black people, too. You know what I'm saying? 
I yeah, I mean yeah. it's just it's I mean, just no. not it's just not portrayed on a video as much. You, do that make any sense? You know, yeah. because yeah. I so, so the question is am I afraid? I'm no, well yeah, I I I'm afraid to be honest with you. I mean, you know, my son 20, you know, 24 out there you know, he could be driving, he could be pulled over, he could be snatched out of his car. And I'm and I'm out oh, I, I'm out here over the road and you know, I can't you know, I can't do nothing. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, are yeah. are you? I'm gonna be very honest with you. Uh I'm gonna be very, very, very honest with you. I am not afraid. I am not afraid because I have Talk, my boy, as long as you do everything you are taught and believe that the Lord have you, when you step out of this uh, out of this household, then you will make it home. Now, if you don't make it home, then that's your time to go. I don't live my life in fear. Another reason why I say I'm not afraid, because if my, say if my youngest son uh, with the heart defect get pulled over, if he continued to do it, Every last thing he's taught to do, he'll make it home. And if he don't make it home, then that I know that it wasn't my child. I know that now it's time now to go li to war. Listen, so if something wasn't listen, to, Car listen Carissa, I mean, we, we can do everything in the book that we can, that, that everything right. Hand, hand over our credentials, get out of the car when we ask to get out of the car. But, I mean, they still don't it's care. still, right, it, you know, still something yeah. can, something can happen. Because I, I tell my son that too. I, I say, look, you know, you, you get pulled over, don't, don't fiddle around. All right, have your shit ready. Have have your your yeah. license, yeah. your insurance, all that shit. Don't, don't I, I told him to get paper insurance. Uh, you know, I told him never give him your phone. You know, because you know now we got an app that we could pull our insurance up on our phone and all like that. No, give them the give yeah. them the card. Give them the insurance card and your license card. I mean your license. Both hands on the steering wheel, and when they come back to the car talking yang yang shit. Just don't say nothing. But sometimes, yep, some sometimes mind. a cop will, you know, will intimidate the black man. Sometimes the black man will intimidate the cop. You know. And, that, and that's why I'm teaching my boys to. You have to make it home. So it's no point that if you if you teach your and I learned this with dealing with my criminal justice. You can't move in fear. You can't move in okay. fear. You have to remain fearless of knowing that I am going to make it home. I am. I don't, like, I'm going to do everything I'm supposed to do to make it home. Okay. But if I live, if I move in fear, then that's when something could happen, like a, a sudden move, like, oh, I got scared. No. You stay strong in who you are. You are a man that knows you ain't did nothing wrong. You just got pulled over. You're not judging that officer by his color of his skin or by any of his job. The only thing you know is, you got put or something happened and you was at this place. Handle it strong like a man. If 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 I look at it like this, if my son was to pass away or get killed or anything, that we have no control of what's gonna happen. The only thing we know is they did everything they supposed to do while while they was here. And then we're gonna handle it from there. And I say that and I, what made me even think of that to be so strong because when my son had all his heart surgeries I couldn't be in fear. I had to be like, okay, whatever happens, I'm done. Like, whatever happened, if he passed away, it's his time to go. But if he's here, we're going to work with what he's doing while he's here. I'm going I'm to teach him while he's here. We're going to make it through. We're going to do medications while he's here. That's the why he's here. We can't handle the what if. The only thing we can do is handle what's right in front of us. So that's how I move with everything I teach them, everything I do. That's how I move. Like, that's it. I teach my kids not to be racist. I teach them not to be scared. I teach them to be headstrong, be a man, stand in your word, treat people right, and everything will follow. And 
if something happens, it's going to happen. You can't control it. The only thing you got to do is move okay, it. Okay, that's move. what's up. React how things happen. And that's why I feel like I was... That's what's up. This is strong... That's what's <laughs> up. Strong black that's woman. That's what's up, like, man. Coming from, uh, coming from Clarissa Rankins. That's what's up, man. Hey, uh, man, man. Good conversation, man. You can talk to me all day. I'm oh, sorry. Man. We, 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 I mean, we. It's a good conversation, man, because there's so much stuff that's so much stuff that's going on that that you know that I would like to get your opinion on, like, like so so with what what have what have this pandemic, you know, COVID nineteen, uh, what has has that affected has has that affected you trucking, uh, or has it affected you guys? Any? Yeah, it has. It has. Um, my income changed dramatically. Like, um, at first, I wasn't making what I was making, but it affected my household because, I, for one, I'm gonna be honest with you. I I just don't. Now I don't believe it. <laughs> but at first, um, we did keep our son in the house. Uh, both our boys in the house. We we really didn't uh, go nowhere. We didn't have nobody over. But now I'm just I'm kind of looking at it like it's a fraud. Like now I think it, it was a scam. It was fake because all this stuff going on is like what? I thought we all wanted to be together. I thought it, so. It was kind of a lot of stuff going on through my mind. But uh, yeah, it affected us. It, it brought us closer together. It made us become more like that's all we got is each other because that's who we was locked up with for months. And it brought us. It brought our marriage from. Man, we already was close, but now we just can't. We can't get away from each okay. other. Like now, we don't need nobody else. That's all we got is each other. And they brought our boys to be like they so close. They already was close. It just brought us closer. So I kind of happy that the pandemic did happen because it made us realize what, what matters in life. And then it kind of made me feel like this this stuff was fake. <laughs> <laughs> like, so it's, <laughs> so you said it did affect you. You said it did affect you, uh, uh, trucking. So the, trucking, the oh, yeah. so oh, you yeah. so you was being that you what you you drive in a reefer. I'm driving, Dr- but it, it affected me because it it wasn't the loads on board. Everything was shut down. What not get moved? It was man, it was bad. It was bad. Is it is it picking is bad, picking bad. back up though now, right? Well, um, now I run certain loads. I run dog food a lot, so my runs is like I, I had to find a lane that's guaranteed ain't going. Oh, okay. <laughs> like at first I was running clothes. I was running a lot of clothes, but now I'm running dog food, so I know my load ain't going nowhere. I was running um canned goods. I know my load ain't going nowhere, but before I was running um. A little odds and stuff that was un unessential, unessential things, right. and it kind of put me in a hole. But now well, I think we we good now. Now how about now, now how about how about Joey? It, did did it affect him? Because you said he was local, but did did it affect him? Oh, oh well, he worked for. Um, well, I, I think I told you like everybody know he worked for Pepsi. Oh, okay. So no, it didn't affect him at all. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought I, I thought I told you. Yeah, he worked for Pepsi. His job ain't going. He got that retirement <laughs> position. He got, <laughs> he got that retirement slot over there at Pepsi. He ain't right, going he nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. His job ain't going nowhere. All right. No, nah, his job is guaranteed. Okay. Guaranteed right, money. That's, what's, that's that guaranteed that's what's funds up, right man. there. That's what's up. <laughs> Well, Clarissa, man, <laughs> look, before we get on up out of here, tell tell the people where they can find you at, man. Uh, well, my whole family and me and Joy Rankin as a married couple at the Rankins World on YouTube, and we do videos and lives, and we do have some videos of our kids. And then um, I have a motivational channel on YouTube called I Am Clarissa Rankin, and that's nothing but my voice of um, Clarissa Rankin motivates someone to get through a day get through a week and get through another year of being uplifted, motivated, and encouraged. And then I have my YouTube, I mean, my Instagram at I am Carissa Rankin and Joey have his under, um, I am Joey Rankin. And we just, we just all who we are. We're the Rankins, like one of the most powerful couples in the okay. world. We really are. And we're going to stick okay, by that. That's what's up. One of the most powerful couples in the world. Well, thank <laughs> you very much for coming on, Clarissa, man. This is an awesome talk. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Definitely. So, of course, you guys can uh, can find Clarissa on YouTube. 
Rankin's World. You can find her on Instagram. I am Clarissa Rankin. Uh, TikTok. You mentioned TikTok. Now, I'm not a fan of TikTok. Oh. I am not a fan a of TikTok, but... Yeah, you you did a video and you got uh you got I think you got over a million views on that. I got over I think five million all, all together, together yeah. man. So you guys can find her on TikTok. Well, that is it. I hope you guys I hope you guys like this because I I did. Thanks to Joy for coming on and uh, you know chiming in a little bit. Thanks for thank thanks you thank you Clarissa for coming on. All right, all right. <laughs> it was fun. If it you was guys, great. if you good. guys want to come on, all you got to do is hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail dot com. Just hit me up. Y'all want to talk? Talk about whatever. Y'all want to talk about trucking? Talk about world things, culture things, whatever. I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm right here. Uh, if you guys like this like this type of content, all you got to do is like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button. And then you'll get me all the time when I come up with new and improved stuff. And I come on with Clarissa Rankin. <laughs> that is what's up. That is what's up. Guys, thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Me and Clarissa, we are gone.